Okay, in this session I'm going to cover the 100,000 Genomes project, which was a, a project that was completed over the past few years. Uh, and as the name suggests, 100,000 uh, human genomes in the UK were sequenced from start to finish. So I'm going to take you through what this project was all about, why it was done, and most importantly, what was the genetic technology, the sequencing technology that was used to complete this particular project. So it's going to be largely about the sequencing technology, but also about why the project was done. Also thrown into this will be some uh, bits, for the, particularly for those who are interested in the bioinformatics side of things, of covering some, some specialist bioinformatic aspects, which will be more relevant to those studying the bioinformatics arm of the module. There will be some uh, more clinical genetics aspects for everybody else. So after this session you should be able to do the following, explain why the 100,000 Genomes project was done, including the aims, the participants, li likely outcomes, likely health benefits. Uh, you should be able to describe the sequencing technology uh, employed, and for those doing bioinformatics I would expect a little bit more detail from you. Um, for those who are doing bioinformatics I would certainly expect some understanding of the bioinformatic issues associated with next generation sequencing and um, for you bioethics people uh, the ethical issues associated with such big data genetic studies uh, and especially issues where we may find um, accidentally find genetic mutations that we were not looking for and how we should deal with that uh, type of data okay so before we go any further, it's probably well worth pausing this video, getting the slides off Blackboard and clicking on this link here, which is the 100,000 Genomes Overview video from Genomics England, who ran the project. And this gives you a brief overview of the project. So pause the video, have a look at that YouTube video, and then come back uh, to this video to finish off. Okay, so the participants in the 100,000 Genomes are from about 75,000 uh, patients um, but we're getting 100,000 genomes and the reason why it's 75,000 patients or well, patients and their families is because we're also looking at 25,000 cancer patients and the genomes of their tumours so if you're going to look at the genome of the tumour you'll be picking up somatic mutations and you want to know which of those somatic mutations are not present in the patient's constitutional DNA so 25,000 cancer patients, 25,000 actual tumours, and the rest of that we are look, we're looking at another 50,000 cases where we have 20,000 patients with a rare genetic disease, and the rest of the patients who are sequenced, or the people who are sequenced, are close blood relatives of those people with rare genetic diseases. And the reason why we're looking at these 20,000 patients here is because we know that there's a lot of rare genetic diseases out there, a lot of which have not been well genetically characterised. And the aim of this is to be able to find out what is the cause of these um, rare diseases, mostly in children, not exclusively, but mostly in children. And in many cases, these are presumed inherited diseases. Sometimes they are, sometimes they are not. Okay, so on the bottom of the previous page, if you go to the um, PowerPoint version, of the slides on Blackboard, there's a link to this, which is the story of the first person who was sequenced through the 100,000 genomes and then subsequently received a new diagnosis. So this is this web page. It was on the link on the previous uh, slide. And as we look through that, it basically tells you about this particular patient called Georgia. It tells you a clinical story and goes through um, what they found, a little bit about the, the project, and then another patient who was affected there, this is Jessica's story. And in one of these uh, cases, it has given rise to um, a clear genetic disease which also has a uh, potential therapy as well. So this is a completely unexpected, firstly an unexpected disease that was identified and then that gave rise to the potential for a therapy for this particular patient. And it's well worth clicking on that link to uh, follow up on the story of these uh, patients and find out what actually happened to them and how they benefited from being participants in the 100,000 Genomes study. So that, that I've just shown is accessed from this link here. 
So to sequence 100,000 people is going to take an awful lot of sequencing power. And just to remind you of where we have come in recent years, old technology is using the old style dideoxy sequencing method. Um, and this is the um, method where we uh, have a piece of DNA that we want to sequence, usually a single piece of DNA, so a single PCR product. You split that into four different tubes. You supply the, each of those four tubes with DNA polymerase, deoxy A, G, Cs and Ts. And in one tube, you put in dideoxy ATP, another tube, dideoxy GTP, CTP, and then dideoxy TTP. And these dideoxy nucleotides are chain terminators. And you put these in a, a minority ratio. So you put in mostly deoxy A's, G, uh, uh, you put in mostly uh, deoxy A, G, C, and T. And then in this tube, you also put in a minority of dideoxy ATP. So every now and again, DNA polymerase tries to incorporate a dideoxy nucleotide, the chain will terminate and then that PCR product sequence, or the way you're sequencing that piece of DNA, will stop. And that will uh, stop at that point multiple times in multiple independent bits of DNA and you end up with DNA that you can run out on a sequencing gel and you'll see a band at this particular length because that represents an A because that's where a dideoxy A was incorporated and you can read your sequence. So dideoxy sequencing is old technology. It was technology that I was doing in the mid 1990s. So that tells you how old it is and how old I am. Uh, so that's old technology. Nobody does that anymore. We then moved on to uh, big die terminator technology and this is taking knowledge from here, but instead of having a dideoxy chain terminating base that just stopped the DNA polymerase doing its job and having to have radioactively labeled uh, nucleotides in here, with the, with the big chain terminator technology, we have fluorescent, um, we have chain terminators, but they're also fluorescent. So as you extend your DNA, you incorporate a chain terminating C that is fluorescent in the blue channel and that gives you a peak of a certain length and you know that if this is the start of the sequence and this is the end of the sequence and there's a run of C's there that have all been terminated then the sequence must run CCC and then there's a T which is a sort of a mauve colour um, and then we're into it's not very clear on the slides but some G's because they're green so we are getting different fluorescent coloured uh, nucleotides as being the last nucleotide that was incorporated. They are chain terminators and they are fluorescent. And this is using one of these ABI PRISM sequences. And with that, they cost quite expensive, about £300,000. They can do 50 to 100,000 kilobases per hour. Uh, individual reads of under 1,000 uh, base pairs. You can do the maths of how long it would take to sequence a human genome. Now, bear in mind that to have a human, for this type of sequencing, um, you can't, you, you would have to have individual fragments of known DNA that you then copy. So it's, it's, it's not just how long would it take to sequence an entire genome, it's how long would it take to pull together all of the genomic fragments and have them sequenced. It is very, very complicated. It would take an awful long time. Okay, so whole genome sequencing is different. This is targeted sequencing, sequencing a single PCR product or a single genomic clone. A clone would be where you fragment DNA, put it into a plasmid, uh, and then grow up that piece of DNA in a bacterial colony. And then from a uh, primer site on the plasmid, you sequence into the piece of DNA that has been packaged in that vector and you can sequence a clone that way. So this is about sequencing an individual clone at a time. This is an individual PCR product at a time, or a clone. It's, it's, it's very slow and very tedious. In contrast, whole genome sequencing sequences millions of pieces of DNA simultaneously, and it doesn't matter where it comes from, you just basically fragment your DNA, you sequence it using a very clever technology that I'm going to tell you about, and then piece the sequences back together at the end. So imagine that this is the whole genome sequence that we're trying to read. 
obviously it's much longer. We read the sequence in short reads of about 100 base pairs. Okay, then we've done that millions of times, and I'll show you the technology of how to do that in a moment. And then you align all of those sequences to see which fragments of DNA you've read overlap with other fragments of DNA and look for bits where they are directly homologous. And if 50 bases of this overlaps with 50 bases of that, well, that's going to be almost certainly extending from here. This matches this, and therefore this is the next bit of the sequence, and the next bit of the sequence comes from this fragment here, which matches here. So you can have these overlapping fragments to get the full human genome. Now, each of these reads are about 100 base pairs in length, and to get um, a whole human genome of 3 billion base pairs, you would need about 10 to the power of 8 individual reads. That is 10 to the 8 individual pieces of DNA read and then all realigned. Now, that sounds like a crazy amount of sequencing. It is a crazy amount of sequencing. It's a crazy amount of computing power, but it can be done on the sequencing chip within a few hours. The difficulty is piecing all of that sequence back together and it's, it's you, you know, you've got maybe 100 uh, million fragments of DNA each to 100 or 150 bases in length. You're trying to realign them. You use massive computing power to realign them. So it's like the world's most difficult jigsaw, uh, like this. I've got, I've got one of these at home and it is truly impossible to do. Um, mainly because it's, uh, this is the, it's like this on the front and it's the same on the back but twisted by 90 degrees and it is, I've tried it, it's just not even worth trying to do it. However, with computing power, you can do something as complicated as the world's most difficult jigsaw very, very quickly. And this is because if you've got fragments of DNA that are 100 base pairs in length and they overlap with another piece of DNA and that overlap is just 20 base pairs, you can be pretty sure that one of those pieces of DNA follows on from the other piece of DNA. And the reason why you can show that is by using the BLAST tool here. So if you click on that link, and I'll show you how this sequence of DNA, which is just about 20 bases in length, is unique within the human genome. Okay, so I've clicked on that link, which brings up BLAST, and BLAST is a nucleotide search tool that will search the human genome. And I've typed in that sequence that was on my slide, which AAG, CT, blah, blah, blah. Okay, you can put that in, and then you can uh, blast this sequence. And to do that, we, we're actually searching against the human database, which is just happens to be that one. Uh, we click on blast, and then we wait. Okay. So I will... It, it's currently searching. It will take a while. I'll pause the video, and I'll let you know when it's done. Okay, that took about 30 seconds for the um, BLAST server to take that sequence, check it against the entire human genome, and tell me how many times it appears in the human genome. And as I scroll down, it comes up with this. So, that sequence that I put in uh, matches the human genome there on chromosome 9. And it has a score, a maximum score there, 40.1. It's the highest score of the whole lot. Okay, there are some other partial matches on here, uh, but as we scroll down, so remember looking for chromosome 9 um, is going to be the top hit, so I'm going to scroll right down here, or, if I, or even better if I click on graphic summary, so you're on the description, click on the graphic summary and scroll down and it, can, it shows you that only one of these is a perfect match, which is that one. Okay, and then we can have a look at the alignments, and it shows you all of the sequences that matched. And there were 20 base pairs, so 1 to 20, we've got a perfect match, matching some sequence on chromosome 9. The next best match matches from uh, 6 to 19 of that sequence that I put in and another match is from 8 to 20. So these are partial matches, but this sequence that I put in only exists once in the human genome. Now that's really helpful because if I had 
a fragment of DNA that had sequenced and it matched 20 base pairs with another piece of DNA, we, almost, we know almost certainly that those two pieces of DNA will sit next to each other on the human genome. So if we've got lots of pieces of DNA, they're 100 base pairs in length, there are going to be lots of other pieces of DNA that match maybe 10, maybe 20, maybe 30 bases of that, and that allows us to line them up perfectly on the human genome uh, and basically be absolutely sure that where one piece of DNA finishes, the next piece that we've sequenced starts, and we can build up an entire human genome that way. Now, the way this breaks down is where we've got repetitive regions of DNA. And you will know from your human genetics that there are lots of repetitive sequence like TA repeats and CA repeats. And we can't really accurately map them onto the human genome because we've got entire runs of repetitive DNA. So this only works for regions of DNA that are not repetitive. OK, so that's the end of the introduction to this, introduction to the uh, 100,000 genomes. What I'm now going to do is pause the video now, let you go back and look at some of those other videos I've asked you to look at, and then what we're going to look at next is the sequencing technology, which is the following slides, and there's some fairly complicated sequencing technology, and I'll take you through those bits uh, of you know, the, the technicalities of how the Illumina platform works to produce this massively parallel next-generation sequencing.